Hello, Martin Falls HTV. Uh, yes, sir. Um, this is John Mitchell calling you, returning your phone call. Hey, John, how you doing? I got your number from the parish president in Terrebonne yes, Parish. Sir. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to get an update on the FEMA trailers that are on the ground at the Civic Center and trying to okay. find out what's the plan and maybe you could address why so many are still on the ground. I certainly can. So when you look at that staging yard, you're seeing a constant flow in and out. Whenever a trailer goes out, a new one comes in. Until this program's done, it's always going to look full. Okay, because we heard there was just there was some trouble uh, getting contractors to put them together. Is there any truth no, to that? No, 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 absolutely not. Let me just walk you through the process. People register either online, on a website, phone call, call center. They can do it in a, a disaster recovery center, which is right in Homa, but they're also in other parishes. Once they're registered for the, the program, they're prioritized based upon their level of damage. So if a house is destroyed or if it's completely damaged, um, they, those folks rise to the top because this is a sheltering program. It's not, this is a sheltering program run by the state. It's not a disaster housing program, which are run by FEMA. Okay, so this is sheltering. So the reason people with damaged, you know, completely damaged dwellings or destroyed dwellings come to the top is because they don't have any kind of shelter at all. People that have blue roof and things like that, that's their shelter. Once they're prioritized by that you know, categorization, um, they're put in the system. They're, we have to make sure they've filled out all their paperwork, which includes uh, a right of entry and a uh, release of information. Um, and that's, that's a big problem that we've had where people get in, they register, but they don't complete their registration. So we've been calling, we've called probably over 3,500 uh, registrants to help them complete their process. Um, some don't even return our phone calls, and that's been a huge issue for us. We can't move forward on a particular um, solution, you know, at a, either a private site or even putting them into a group site until they've completed those two forms. The parishes are responsible for doing the uh, damage assessments to determine if a dwelling is minor damage, medium damage, major damage, or destroyed. It's kind of the categories that you go through. So we're not part of that. We just get that information from um, usually GOSEP, although I, it, it's supposed to come from FEMA to GOSEP then to us. Okay. And, and what we've had to do, because that's a really slow process across the board, um, GOSEP has taken some uh, risk on themselves and said, look, we can't wait for all that process to go. If a person self-declares, which it has to be truthful, because that would be fraud, if they self-declare that they are, have major damage, we'll go out and inspect the property to see if we can put a trailer on their site. Okay. So there's two processes. So we get the information, although it's slow to get come in. So if it's categorized as high by GOSIP and ultimately FEMA, those people go right into the system. If it's not, but they're in a an area that we can assume, like the lower parts of Lafourche and, and Terrebonne, that have just got tremendous wind damage, we know that those folks are likely without some part of the natural sheltering process. So we're moving forward with those. We're calling them. If they're registered completely, they're going to get an uh, inspection done on their property to see if they can get a trail. They already haven't started that process. I think we're over 500 site assessments for trailers at this point. And that number you know, obviously climbs constantly because we're out there. Is that Terrebonne or Terrebonne in Lafouche? Uh, there's seven parishes, Terrebonne, Lafouche, St. John, St. James, St. Charles, Jefferson, and Plaquemines. And you said Jefferson 500 is. trailers for seven parishes? That's correct. Okay, so let me ask the obvious question is, yep. that seems like a very small amount of trailers for a large area of catastrophic damage. Certainly, yeah, I mean, we would love to have that number higher. And that's why we're pushing to get people to complete that registration process. Again, we've called 3,000 of them. We've sent text messages to probably more than that to let them know they've got to complete their process. And they, they can go on the website, they can go to the DRCs, they can call the call center. But until that process happens, that they get the registration completed, we can't act on it. I can't enter somebody's property without a right of entry. And you seem like a, a very reasonable person. So let me just 
let me just ask you is, and it's not your process, it's a federal process they have to go through. Is it too complicated? And I don't want to demean or, uh, you know, yeah. degrade anybody out there who's listening, but is it, is it too tough a process for some people to complete? It shouldn't be, but we know, I mean, we all know that people don't, some people don't have access to computers. That's why we're starting to get into the DRC so they can come in and we can do it for them. Last week we were in six different DRCs around the, the, the highest damage parishes. The return isn't as fruitful as we had hoped, but we are getting people to come in. But it's not as, as busy as we had hoped. We want to pump out a lot more than that per day, and we have the capacity to do that. The challenge is, again, is getting those folks fully registered. Again, the concept here with these programs are if they don't have shelter, if they're living in a tent, living in a car, they're living in their house that they shouldn't be because it's really damaged, they don't have electricity, water, sewer type of thing, that's who gets these trailers. Long term, the FEMA Disaster Housing Program, which installs MHUs, manufactured housing, that is going to cover some of the people that certainly have damage enough that they would qualify for the program. But this program that, they, that I run is completely shelter related. If they don't have a roof over their head that they can live in, that's who's getting the trailers. Just did some interviews on location and he's living yeah. in a tent and uh, he yeah. said he had made the application but that he just hadn't heard anything back. So what would he do to make sure, because he is one that definitely needs a, a trailer, so I guess I'm lobbying for him right now. What should yeah, that know, gentleman a do? A lot of people have signed up with FEMA for the General Disaster Housing Program, and they haven't heard necessarily about this sheltering program. He is, that right there, is the person that we want to reach out to and find them to make sure they're qualified for the program. I can tell you right now, once that process is complete, it takes a day for us to go out there and do a site assessment, a day or two. And then following that, they get a trailer that fast. Now, part of what we're running into is the homes that they're living in, they have no power to their house. So you know what happens with that? We have to install a power pole and a meter, work with energy, et cetera, to get power to put the trailer in. Typically, sewer and water we find on the property. Install it, but power is a whole other game. The parishes are helping with, with the contact. So what we do is we go out, do the assessment, we identify that it needs uh, needs a power pole. If it doesn't, we hook it right to the house, put a 30 amp breaker in, set that trailer, and it's ready. It takes about a day and a half. Then we have to do a COVID cleaning inside the unit. Once that COVID cleaning is done, if the power and water and sewer are active on that site, that person's going to be licensed into the unit, and it's theirs. It's a really simple process. So we're talking Our about channel. from start to finish, four or five days at the most. As long as we have power. So really all the uh, power companies would be the wild card because as soon as they could get out there, yep. you can get the trailer in place. That's correct. Okay. Yep. That's fair, yeah, so that's fair enough assessment. I'm just trying to find out. So the, the units we've seen at the Civic Center, yep. when we go tomorrow the next day, they all have already left and others have taken their place? They're not all flipping. There's 460 there, I think. It's always going to look full. You're just looking at different trailers. So the, the public watching can help you out by just making sure their application process is complete and following through with everything they need to do to get you to activate them. If you can get that message out, I will bow to you. <laughs> uh, well, I don't need that. I'm just trying to help the people just <laughs> like you are. Yeah. We spend our mornings, every morning, to say, what more can we do to reach the people? We're sending text messages and phone calls and everything to, to reach out. Some areas we've hit sweet spots where it really works. Other areas, it's just falling deaf ears. Terrebonne in particular is really picking up, though. We're over 100 trailers set in Terrebonne now. Well, we're, re um, we're reaching a good audience in Terrebonne because a lot of them are watching on our channel now, either either by antenna, some of them have cable restored, but they're also watching by Facebook and YouTube. Okay. So we're working on getting penetration back into the other areas like Lafourche and, and other yeah. areas that we hit hard. But So I'd imagine Terrebonne is going to pick up first. Terrebonne's got the highest amount of people that have that heavy level of damage that we were talking about. So certainly there at the attention uh, is a higher percentage in Terrebonne. Lafouche, I think, is next. 
and then on down the line. I think St. John is pretty close to that as well. The damage is just awful, man. I was down at Grand Isle midweek last week, and it's heart-wrenching. Well, if you see um, uh, terrible on all the the bayous we've been down, Lafouche, it's a uh, it's like a bomb went off in a in a four or five parish area. It's unbelievable. So it's Ida Sheltering LA dot com. No www. If they're registered, they can go there and they can log in and and see what their status is. Okay, John. Thank you for your time. Right. We appreciate sure. it. All right. Okay. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Right, in all honesty, seems like a, a fair guy. It, it, like it's lost in the trenches here. You hear things, but when you talk to the other side, they have their own reasons. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's see if those FEMA trailers start moving. Let's get people to go in, check, double check, triple check. And uh, we're going to work with John to try to get these trailers moving quicker. We'll be right back after a short break. <laughs> 